Good morning. It should have been good afternoon, but uh, my internet at home had different ideas. I think that the little squirrels that run my internet had decided to take off for Christmas. So we're going to record it this morning. I apologize for it not being uploaded last night. It started uh, just slow and then it just stopped. So uh, we're out here recording it fresh this morning and we're hoping that you're having a good week. Uh, as we continue our midweek Bible study series, we're studying a little bit about Job. It's a Bible study on faith through some difficult circumstances. Certainly, uh, no one in the audience uh, is, uh, is a stranger to some difficult circumstances, especially in the times that we're having now. Uh, so let's begin with a word of prayer. We're going to get into uh, the discussion that he is having with some of his friends we're going to try to make it through um, this afternoon, or this morning rather, we're going to try to make it through this discussion with uh, uh, the first friend that he has here, and uh, then we're going to go on and uh, look at the last two. Uh, Eliphaz is the first one, and then uh, we're going to take up what Bildad and Zophar also said too. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Holy Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity in the midst of some difficult circumstances, we're grateful for the technology, the ability, the, um, the way to be able to communicate still in some, uh, some times that are, are strange to us. And Father, we just pray that we'll continue to be able to have these and to use these things to bring your truth to, uh, to ourselves, to others. Father, in difficult circumstances, we just pray that this study will help to strengthen us, to give us some understanding, glean some things from this uh, that will help us be stronger in faith towards you. Father, we know that we have several in our number, uh, several of our friends, our, our, our forever family who are struggling with, uh, with COVID and other sicknesses. We just pray, Father, very special healing to be with them. But we pray, Father, that you will bless those that are giving care and watch over them as well as those who are caring for, for many. Father, we just pray that you'll give us the strength that we need. Uh, humble us. Uh, uh, we know that uh, this is an opportunity for us to be humble. We just pray, Father, we'll take this opportunity to humble ourselves, uh, to be able to put you first in the lives of, uh, for our families, for ourselves, for our church, for our country, for our world. Father, forgive us where we failed there. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So far, we've been introduced to Job, um, a wealthy and a righteous man who went through a series of losses, uh, really created an enormous physical and, and emotional crisis in his life. Some of that we're going to deal with uh, this afternoon in our study. And despite losing his wealth and his children, um, the, the support of his wife, and lastly, his health, he continues to have faith in God and doesn't sin despite the situation that he's in. One of the things that I, I see happening, and I've, I've mentioned it before in other lessons and, and perhaps in this one too, is, is it seems like when the, the burden gets heavy, the first thing that we try to take off and, and, and leave is God. We try to, well, you know, we'll shut him out. We'll, we'll forsake a, being able to, to assemble with a family of God, we uh, sometimes will even uh, uh, forsake Him and 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 just try to, to focus in on on the on the bad. And uh, it's important, I think, that we take this opportunity to look at Job and all of his suffering and let it help guide us uh, in in knowing what's important and knowing what's first. And we know that He didn't do this this perfectly. We know that that He wasn't uh, blameless in in the way that he reacted, uh, but we see a man that's real uh, and a man that poses some questions that, that all of us have had from time to time, perhaps, um, you know, considering, uh, um, you know, why, why must the good people suffer and, and it seems like the bad things, uh, the bad people perhaps uh, seem to prosper. I think one of the features of Job's belief system was that he believed that uh, Job's uh, that, that God's justice rather works in real time. That was one of the ideas, the thoughts that we see conveyed in this message here. In, in other words, good people are blessed right away by God and, and, and by prosperity, by, 
by good health, perhaps that they're a sign of righteousness and, and sinners likewise, the idea goes, are judged and punished right away. Uh, and and the, this poverty, this adversity, they're just a, a sign of God's displeasure with them in their actions. And so they believe that, that, that good are blessed and that sinners are punished right here, right now, on this earth and in the times to come. So even though Job reacted faithfully throughout the, the physical crisis that he suffered, he began to break down as he faced the theological crisis that we're going to start talking about uh, today. Uh, it came in the form of those free, free friends. Remember we talked about those guys coming and just sitting with him, and, and, and it was a great, great thing to see as an example. Sometimes that's the best thing that we can do is just be that for each other. But when they started to speak, we started to challenge the situation. We start to see the, the theological crisis that Job's going through really start coming to life. Um, you'll know that the comment on Job's predicament said, if, "If you're just as you know, if you're so innocent, if you're so righteous as you claim, why is God punishing you so severely?" And so Job's dilemma uh, is that he believed both statements to be true. He believed he was innocent, he believed he was righteous, and he believed that God's always going to punish guilty sinners. And so this dilemma uh, brings this on in Job's mind. Why was God punishing an innocent man, a righteous man? This theological crisis is played out of a, a, a three different sections here, speeches between Job and his friends. There's also two speeches by another man, a young man named Elihu, who waits until Job and his friends are finished, and, and then he makes his comments, and to which Job makes no uh, response that we read about. These dialogues back and forth, uh, these really explain this prevailing theology. It's even kind of around the day that, that, that this, you know, that good people are going to be blessed here on earth and, and that bad people are punished. And if there's something bad happening, then it must be something that you've done wrong. It's the same idea that the disciples asked Jesus, you know, what, you know, when they, uh, you know, what did this man do to deserve this? Right? Some scholars suggest that the, the theme of this first cycle of speeches it is the nature of God. Job's three friends each have a point of view concerning this uh, topic and they kind of weave it in and out of their arguments there with Job. Uh, Eliphaz, who we're going to talk about today, emphasizes God's holiness and his goodness. We'll see later that Bildad really emphasizes God's righteousness, and that's all these things are true there. And then Zophar really emphasizes God's wisdom in the things that he does. So uh, if we're going to be taking notes and looking back at those later, Eliphaz emphasizes God's goodness, Bildad emphasizes God's righteousness, Zophar emphasizes God's wisdom. And so let's look at Eliphaz first. For what we can gather, from the reading here, we, we, we kind of get the picture that Eliphaz is probably the elder of, of the friends of Job here. Uh, he uh, seems to be more gracious in the things that he says to Job. Um, based on his arguments, you know, he bases his arguments that he gives on this idea of the doctrine of retribution. That's what we just talked about. The, the good are blessed and the bad are punished here all in real time. Um, and, and he says basically, well, this is just the way that it's always been. The good people, they're blessed. The bad people are punished. Eliphaz's approach is kind of like that. And he goes on to, to say, um, to, when he speaks to Job, he starts off really, I think, in, in a real kind manner as he's, as he's talking about it. I encourage you to read that, uh, that in its entirety. We're going to kind of do some summation, read just a few scriptures from each one, just for the sake of time. He starts off pretty kindly towards Job in his speech, but then he goes pretty quickly into some rebuke. And then he pleads with his friend not to despise this chastening that the, the, the God's putting on him. Uh, and he finishes by promising him some future blessings if he simply 
repents. He begins by really expressing surprise towards Job. That one who had comforted others through through similar experiences would break down so quickly. He exhorts Job by reminding him of his own past conduct when the situation was reversed, when other people were going through suffering. He reminds him of how Job um, <clears throat> said, you know, was, was, was the one who would comfort and, and give those words, and yet he's breaking down so quickly. In, in other words, he's kind of saying, you need to be practicing what you've been preaching to others. I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. I'm, I'm guilty of, of preaching, you know, you know, faith, 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 and then sometimes it it rocks me pretty hard. And I'm not alone. I don't think in that. Um, I'm listed on the board here for your reading uh, in the King James. But what I'm going to do, because some of these, some of this speech is is something that I needed to break down, and so I'm going to be rendering it from the English Standard in in, in some of these passages, just for for my understanding. Uh, but first and all, to look at is Job chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. Job chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. The English Standard says it this way, Then Eliphaz the Tenemites answered and said, If one ventures a word with you, will you be impatient? Yet who can keep from speaking? Behold, you have instructed many, and you have strengthened the weak hand. Your words have upheld him who was stumbling. You have made firm the feeble knees. But now, verse 5, now it's come to you, and you are impatient. It touches you, and you are dismayed. He also again goes on to remind him of this idea, this doctrine that they have of retribution. Um, they both obviously believe that this was true. One, declaring Eliphaz that, that, that he knew from experience that this is true. Verses 7 through 9 of Job chapter 4. Remember, remember who that was innocent ever perished? Or, were, or where were the upright cut off? As I have seen, those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. By the breath of God they perish. And by the blast of his anger, they are consumed. Eliphaz has been called a, a prophet. Uh, some have said he was a visionary. Some scholars have said that. Um, one who sees visions. And obviously he demonstrates this in, in verses 12 through, uh, or 4 and verse 12, and through 5 and verse 17. He describes one of those visions that he's having there. He, he says, now a thing was secretly brought to me, and mine ears received a little thereof. And thoughts of the visions of the night, when deep sleep fall on me, and fear came upon me, and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my fat flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the, discern the form of it. Therefore, an image which was before my eyes, there was silence, and I heard a voice saying, he starts going on into talking about that vision beginning in verse 17. And, and I would encourage you, beginning in verse 17 of chapter 4, to read that vision and what he says. But I'm going to summarize. There's, there's actually three attempts to encourage Job that I wanted to bring out here because I think that they're important for us. I think that, that they're accurate in those, um, those encouragements that we need to hear in times of trouble that, that we may be going through. The first one is this. You need to realize, and I've got it listed except your sinfulness, but, but I think if you just kind of break it down to this point, I think it's an important one. Realize that no one is perfect, not even you. That's important. Nobody's perfect, not even you. I think when we come to the realization that we are are, are are frail when we come to the realization that we make mistakes. I think that'll help us in our walk. I think it'll help us in our walk to understand that we need God, that, that we need Christ in our life, that we stumble, but we need to get back up. We're not perfect, and, and that needs to be the way that we deal with other people too. That when we realize that, that we're not perfect, that nobody's perfect, 
we accept that, that we're not perfect, then we're not going to be as harsh to judge other people when they fall. Just because they sin differently than you do or that I do doesn't mean that they're less important to God. And that's the way that we need to deal with them. We need to deal with them appropriately. And that's uh, something I think that's in, in, important to remember. The second encouragement that he gives to Job, Job is this, that Job should commit his cause to God. Whether he's innocent or guilty, he needs to go to God to resolve those problems. That's in around chapter 5 and verse 8 beginning. And I think that's sound advice. Take it to God. Take it to the Lord in prayer, the song that we sing sometimes. We need to understand that with God, all things are possible important, encouraging advice. Number three, we need to understand that we should be happy. We should be happy when we go through some trials. And again, Job, uh, Job, Job is, is, is right partly and wrong partly. We'll talk more about that in a second. In, in this idea, so is Eliphaz here. That, that sometimes God chastens those that he loves. The Hebrew writer talks about that, doesn't he? Uh, sometimes as, as, a, as a children of God, we go through some trials. And, and sometimes those trials are to help us to, uh, to make us stronger. Sometimes those trials that we go through, um, you know, are, are to help humble us. Sometimes those trials that we go through are to help us to, to have a stronger faith when other storms come up in our lives. And, and don't we see that? I, I can't recall the number of times that that it's dawned on me that, you know, that I have been letting little things bother me and little things bother me, and then all of a sudden a big old storm comes along and I realize that those little things that bothered me, you know, that wasn't a big deal. We need to understand that uh, you know that sometimes those that bad things happen, and, and that, that those things can make us bitter, or they can make us better. He reminds Job uh, in those things of these these three things, and he's trying to, to to give them a positive light about those things. Now, Eliphaz's speech is true. But it wasn't accurate. I mean, it's true. Let's back up and look at those things again. We need to accept that we're not perfect. We need to accept that we make mistakes. We need to commit to, to God. We need to take those things that are going on in our life, no matter how big, no matter how small, we need to take those things to God. Now, that's sound advice. That's true advice. We need to remember that sometimes God chastens those that he loves. We need to remember that. Eliphaz, while he gave him some good advice, some true advice, they weren't necessarily accurate because, again, he was thinking that those things was happening to Job because Job had sinned, and he just needed to repent. He just needed to make those things right. But what Job didn't understand, what Eliphaz didn't understand, what we have the advantage of in reading this now is that Satan was the one that destroyed this innocent man's life to just to make a point, to prove that, that his, without his blessings that Job would soon abandon God. I think beginning in chapter 6 and uh, the first part of chapter 6 and continuing through that chapter and then on through part of uh, chapter 7, we see the reply that Job gives to Eliphaz. I think it's important for us to note, and again, I encourage you to read those things on your own and study those things. But the point that I pull from this is that the response that Job gave, it wasn't a theological rebuttal 
uh, it wasn't a philosophical uh, response to the things that he said, but it was emotional. His reply was emotional. It was raw, and, and it was the cry of someone who has suffered some tremendous, tremendous losses in his life. In a, in a, in a, in a word, his reply is human. It's deeply human. He says three things about the predicament that he's in in response to his, his uh, elder friend, Eliphaz. Chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, he talks about his misery. He just talks about this intolerable misery that he's going through. He answers and he says, Oh, that my grief were thoroughly weighted my calamity laid in the balances together. For now it would be heavier than the sands of the sea. Therefore my words are swallowed up, the arrows of the Almighty One within me, the poison whereof drinks up my spirit, the terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. I think that we can agree that he's got a good reason to be miserable. He's had some pretty terrible things happen to him. He's lost his family. He's lost the support of his wife. He's lost his health. He's lost everything that, as far as those material things that he enjoyed up to that point. And, and so he is he's miserable. That's his response. The second thing is he's disappointed. He's disappointed in his friend. Disappointed in his friend. Down in verse 14, again, it's I'm going to render this out of the English standard on this one. He who withholds kindness from a friend forsakes the fear of the Almighty. I think that's a good one. It's a good one to, to, to take and write down and put it in a real phone. Stick it on the refrigerator. I think that's important for us as friends especially as, as, as a forever family, to just realize this. Don't withhold kindness from your friend. He who withholds kindness from a friend forsakes the fear of the Almighty. This, his point about them is, is that they were withholding kindness from him. They were withholding warmth from him as friends. Again, if they had just stayed where they were and just sat there and been with him, I think that would have been the best medicine for Job. Once they opened their mouth, they started, they started hurting old Job. They started bringing that misery up. They started picking at that scab with him. And so he calls them on. He calls Eliphaz on specifically and says, you, look, your, your, your appearance, your speaking here to me has only increased my misery, has only increased my suffering. It's not been a comfort to me in some terrible times. And that's not we need, what we need to be is friends to one another. And then we see Job revealing his bitterness beginning in chapter 7 and verse 1. He reveals his bitterness against God. And, and he's praying for an end of his suffering through death. Verse 21. He doesn't deny God. He doesn't deny him, but he's angry with him. And, and his prayer is not for deliverance or for healing, but he's praying for death, which, which will simply put him out of his misery. Look at verse 21. Why, and he's praying here to God, why do you not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now I should lie in the earth. You will seek me, but shall not but I shall not be now what Job I think is implying here is if God doesn't immediately help him take away whatever's going on that's, that's tormenting him it is soon going to be too late for him for he, he's soon going to be gone he's not begging for death or, or offering to take his own life but he really doesn't believe he's got it in him he says I just don't have the gas to go any further here Lord I don't have what it takes to physically endure this suffering much longer. Next week, as I said, we're going to go ahead and take up to talk about Bildad and, 
and the things that, that he says to Job and things that Job responds back. And then we're going to try to look also next week at Zophar's speech. Uh, we'll see those beginning in Job chapter 8, which is going to be Bildad's speech. And then Zophar's beginning in Job 11 in verse 1. I'm hoping that this has been a blessing to you. There's some good nuggets, some things in here that we can be as far as understanding of who we are and need to understand of who we are to ourselves. And we need to understand who we need to be as far as friends, as far as encouragement to those who might be suffering around us. God bless you. We thank you. We love you. We, we hope that you'll tune in and, and, uh, and to our, our series. Please let other folks know about these to, that, that may be an encouragement for them. Also, our morning worship from 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We are still having an auditorium worship assembly. We have still got things set up to make it as safe as possible. We got us distanced here. We have masks provided. Uh, we'll make sure that everything's wiped down and cleaned very good before we come in and appreciate those that are helping to make that possible too. And we've still, uh, we're still fighting and we just pray that you'll help us uh, continue in that fight and pray for us in this fight uh, to try to, to get things back to some kind of normal. And we appreciate and love you very much. Um, let's get in this with a word of prayer. I'm gonna try to get this thing uploaded. I think we'll have better luck here than we did up in Tennessee. And uh, uh, we'll go from there. Lord willing, this next week. Our Holy Father, we thank you for this truth that we need to see. Um, these encouraging words, even though they were mis, um, misapplied to, to the idea that just because of sin that that's what was going on, we appreciate those encouraging things that, uh, that Eliphaz gave his, uh, his friend. And we just pray that we'll take those things of encouragement, those tidbits. We pray that we'll understand also that how we need to respond to those who are suffering around us, to be that friend, to be warm be warm and compassionate and loving them uh, through this. We know, Father, that we're just, uh, we're human. We make mistakes. We're not always eloquent in the things that we say, but we just pray, Father, that you'll use us to help to be an encouragement to others, um, that you'll help to build us up to in our faith. Father, we thank you. Through Christ's name we pray. Amen.